I am a I'm a mom. I am a、um, wife. I have three kids. I was going through a really bad divorce.、Uh, I needed to start my own business where I had some flexibility and some freedom. And of course, we know that like cleaning and organizing has a low startup, right? It was a very very low startup. Uh, so, so that's kind of who I am. And then anybody can go and clean a house. Anyone can go clean an office, pretty much, as long as you have, you know, a county license or a state license. Same thing with organizing. It's you don't need to be certified in it. You can get, but you don't have to.、Um, so I learned as much as I could about organizing when it came to the business, and it was it was a really big need. A lot of people don't do it. It's a very good niche market. Who cares if it's right? Who cares if you have a website? Who cares if it's perfect? Just go and start. Yeah. What's up, y'all? AJ Simmons here, the cleaning business goat and founder of the Clean Biz Network, and I'm back with another great episode for y'all today. I got a special guest. This is somebody who I met through my guy Tony Williams. Shout out to him, and we were at the、uh, BSCA、uh, Contractor for Success conference, and in Las Vegas just passed. And、uh, he introduced me to her, and she told me about a tool that she has that I think that my audience would definitely get some value from. And I wanted to bring her on and kind of share. Not only that, but also just talk about her journey as an entrepreneur. So, without further ado, please welcome the owner of Organize It, Whoop Recruit, and I forgot you got another company too that I even forgot、yes. to put that one down. <laughs> so we'll talk about that one as well. Miss Libby Delusion, how are you doing, Miss Libby? I'm great. Thank you for having me on. No problem. Did I say the last name correct? Yes, you did. Okay. Perfect, perfect. All right. Well, you might not know, but what we like to do over here when we start off with the interviews, we like to go ahead and just jump in and ask you about where you are as far as revenue goes with your company. And I guess since you started with a cleaning company, I understand. So I guess you can kind of share what you did with your cleaning company. Yeah, absolutely. So、um, I have a cleaning and professional organizing company. So it's a it's an interesting mix, but it's a great synergy.、Um, so we do residential cleaning and professional organizing. Um, I started my company.、Um, I think I started the organizing in 2014, and I added the cleaning division because get this, I wanted to、uh, make money without working. So I started the cleaning division in 2018, and everybody laughs because I had no idea how hard it was to staff a cleaning company. Yeah. Okay. Fair enough.、Um, fair enough. And then from、All、there,、right、I started、now. the other companies, but I don't know if we just want to stay with the cleaning company for right now. <laughs> Gotcha. Okay. Well, before we jump into how you got、uh, got to this point and building that and all of that, let's just rewind a little bit. Let me just ask you,、uh, who is Libby? Where are you from? The background story. Oh、uh, yeah. Um. So,、uh, who is Libby? I am a. I'm a mom. I am a、um, wife. I have three kids.、Uh, I live in Fort Myers, Florida. Originally from Oklahoma,、um, and. You know, I just love to work. I've always been an entrepreneur. Come from an entrepreneur background, and I got into the cleaning business.、Uh, like most most others, is I needed、uh, to start my own thing. I was going through a really bad divorce.、Uh, I needed to start my own business where I had some flexibility and some freedom. And of course, we know that like cleaning and organizing has a low startup, right? It was a very very low startup. Uh, so, so that's kind of who I am, and then from there, I've evolved. Being from an entrepreneur background,、um, I've always owned businesses,、uh, but then I evolved into software. Which what are what are the other two businesses that I have?、Um, gotcha. So,、okay. Yeah, I'm still so I still own Organize It.、Um, I'm still involved. Um, okay. Um, because I think it's a great business. It keeps me grounded to. Like what's happening, it keeps me humble because、uh, it's it's a hard business to to grow、um, and to staff. Okay, fair enough. Now, what is organized? Okay, so it started as an organizing company, then you added the cleaning element. So, I guess my first question with that is like, what's the difference between an organizing company and a cleaning company? Great question. <laughs>、uh, so, organizers,、um, we touch objects or move objects that were brought into the home. Uh, by the owner, right? And so we organize it. We organize residential homes, but we also organize businesses, like their inventory rooms, supply rooms. 
But organizing is moving and purging of objects, right? Where cleaning is we're moving dirt or accumulation of natural buildup. So if you think it that way, so my organizers only organize and my cleaners only clean. We don't cross. Uh, it's a different skill set. Okay, nice, nice. Now, organize. I'm trying to think like, okay, so let's just say if somebody is starting like a, uh, if somebody's in a residential cleaning company now and they're like, hold up, wait a minute. <laughs> what is this organizer? How can I get into that? I guess like, how did you know how to get into that? Like, did you have somebody to mentor you to show you that avenue? Did you just kind of like come up with it yourself? How did you even get into that? So I got into it first. I've always been super organized and um, I, I went to the library because this was a few years back <laughs> and uh, checked out every book on organizing. And it's in a very, it's, it's kind of like cleaning. It's a very unregulated industry, right? Anybody can go and clean a house. Anyone can go clean an office pretty much as long as you have, you know, a county license or a state license. Same thing with organizing. It's You don't need to be certified in it. You can get, but you don't have to. Um, so I learned as much as I could about organizing when it came to the business. And it was, it was a really big need. A lot of people don't do it. You know, organizing has to do with like purging and sorting and categorizing and then creating a system for the space to then put the items back to work in the most efficient way possible. The one thing with organizing that's great is it is a high price point. So we get about $100 an hour for our service. Um, so it's a very high price point. You need no supplies, like literally no supplies. Our organizers show, organizers show up in their uniform and like with a label maker. <laughs> um, the customer supplies the boxes or the bags um, or the bins for that. So it's, it's a very good niche market. The only drawback to organizing it, it's not recurring. Ah, so th that's kind of the all oh, moment. It's not a recurring service. The most that we can get for the recurring service is about a quarterly visit. Um, yes, but it complements your cleaning really well. So you could offer this if you if you do commercial cleaning, you could organize supply rooms, closets. Your if your cleaners have that skill set, because organizing in business is real. Like if you've seen some of these offices that we clean. Um, it is a real service. And so if you're doing residential cleaning, it, it's a very good Mary because with residential cleaning, we don't clean messy rooms. Like we don't clean counters that are covered with 80% of like 80% of the counters covered. So then we sell or upsell our organizing to the houses that we can't get to the cleaning. Like we can't get to baseboards and we can't get to counters. So they're a very good mix. Yeah, now that's genius right there because it's like you're right. We can't well, typically if, if if a space is cluttered, we tell the client either a we'll we won't clean that space or we'll just be like, can you please clean it up first before we start? But I didn't think that like that's a natural service. You're right because maybe they won't ever clean that part up or organize it. So hey, we'll do it if you pay us. That's I love that, and I also like the fact that you can get away with you could not get away with, but you can charge a hundred dollars per hour for it, and then also. I guess you're right. It can't be recurring because once you organize it, organize it, if you did a good job, it's pretty set for a good long time until they mess it up again. Right. So yep. that makes yeah. sense. <laughs> okay. Well, that's why now quarterly is about the most we could get for the recurring. Exactly. Okay. Now let's jump into uh Woot recruit. Now what is Woot recruit? That's what I actually really wanted to get you on here for. Great question. So uh, when I started the cleaning division, I had no idea how to clean, knew nothing about it. Um, I'm half Mexican and half Native American. So when it was time to clean our house, it was like Saturday morning, turn the music on and you, you know, the kids clean, we clean. <laughs> um, <laughs> and so that's how I grew up and I didn't know anything about it. So, you know, I, I had said, Hey, I want to add a cleaning division to the organizing company. Um, and I had no intentions of me cleaning. Um, cause I wanted to continue to organize. I was the organizer in the company and I, I knew nothing about it. So I said, Hey, I'm going to give the company like a year of my time to like learn how to clean. What is, what entails, I wanted to create a training manual. And so what happened was the cleaning took off because I already had a database of customers that were my organizing customers that wanted us it took off. It was great. But then I got pregnant with my daughter and oh. it all happened like at the same time. And I had cleaned myself into a job and I couldn't get out of the field. Like I was cleaning all day, changing my clothes in the car, running to a Starbucks to go to an interview for someone that wasn't even there, like didn't even show right. up. Right. And I, I got to a point of like desperation. 
um, because I didn't want to clean and have to have my daughter. I, I needed to staff. I needed to figure these things out. Um, and so I created a process to, you know, I thought to myself, this is stupid. Like this traditional game of one-off scheduling and going to an interview and people are ghosting you. And it, I, I have no time to look at Indeed. Like this is dumb. <laughs> and so yeah. I created a process. My organizing side created this process. And I said, okay, the way companies grow and scale, there's this great book called The Exponential Organization. And it, they talk about unicorn companies. We all know what a unicorn company is, right? Those Airbnb apps, those Uber apps. The way they become a unicorn company is that they have to leverage something. They have to leverage an asset or time. They have to leverage something. So we know Airbnb and Uber leverages other people's cars and time. Like they're driving in their own cars, right? Leveraging time and an asset. Um, Airbnb leveraging other people's houses. So I thought to myself, okay, for me to grow and scale, to get out of the field, I have to leverage something. And we know in our industry, it's really time. Like I have no more time. I have to leverage time, but I have no more. I'm cleaning houses all day or offices all day. So I created from that model, the EXO model, I created a, my process to leverage the applicant's time. And it's an engine that runs and it's powered by the applicant, the office, the owner, the business literally essentially does nothing. And it's driven by the applicant because the applicant is, is the one who is controlling how far they get each time. And then because of that, um, I had to make it the most user friendly interface for the applicant because they needed to want to be on it and finish it and wow wow like this they look good and so then i got into like it was all video guided and it features the company's brand and so essentially i created this process for my own company uh, to get me out of the field and i got from startup to a million dollars in three years um nice. with the help of cbf so i'm a debbie <laughs> i am a debbie uh, cbf member uh debbie sardone and then recruiting, um, you know, with this recruiting engine, I could, I can staff with no problem. So we turn that simple process into what now is Woot Recruit. Okay. Um, and so, you know, I can say with confidence that Woot Recruit is the first ever recruitment program tailored exclusively for the service industry, for the cleaning industry. Nice. And we do recruiting now for about 300 companies, uh, uh, primarily cleaning. We do some other things like power washing or window washing um, in um, lawn care, but we're primarily focused because we were made by a cleaning company owner for cleaning companies. Right. It's just an amazing process. It's an unconventional way of recruiting. I love it. So first off, congrats on, on, on cracking that million dollar mark, especially in a short period of time too. So congrats on that. And also, Shout out to Miss Debbie Sardone, who will be speaking at the Clean Biz Network Conference 2024 next month. Uh, so make sure y'all get y'all tickets. But uh, also, so I wanted to know, how are you finding these applicants to come on to Woot Recruit and actually even, you know, apply for these jobs? Yeah, so great question. So Woot Recruit is a program, essentially. There's three right. parts to the program. We have account managers who manage your account, keep your recruiting healthy because recruiting is not static, it changes. It, it changes with the market, with the industry. Um, so we have our account managers, we have our hub, which is our tool. Imagine like an ERM, like a CRM, but for recruiting. And then we have our practices that we teach you on, like the unconventional methods of how, why are we leveraging applicants time? Like, how does that work? <laughs> um, so I do a lot of coaching inside, all on recruiting, inside our platform. And essentially, we still use means like Indeed or Facebook because we have to source them from somewhere, but we manage that for you. We, our goal is, my goal is um, to, my new platform, I just launched a new interface, is to be able for companies to sustain on their own. Like not de be dependent on Indeed, not be dependent on these companies that hold us hostage <laughs> um, or are more you know, friendly to applicants versus the, the companies, uh, because I'm a company. So I, I go through the same thing you guys do to recruit. Right. 
and so I know how it is. So within our new hub, like we are able to upload all your past applicants. We have retargeting for applicants so that you can retarget instead of constantly paying for new applications, new people. Because if you have a couple thousand already, we can retarget them. And so essentially I'm building you a database so that we can retarget um, through the new hub uh, through drip sequences, text automations. Uh, we need to look at these applicants like leads. We would never delete all of our leads out of a CRM, ever. We were taught that, but no one has taught us to say like, hold on to all these past applicants, whether they were qualified, whether they showed up for an interview, who cares? Because life changes. People can go from an unqualified applicant to qualified, life changes. Our kids age into school, maybe you get a divorce. So they're worth so much money, but we tend to not look at them like that. Yeah, that's genius. And you know, cause they always say always be selling, right? Well, also always be hiring, <laughs> right? Cause you, as you grow on one end, you're going to have to fill in this new business with, with people to actually do the job. So I love that right there. Now, when somebody hires from a uh, recruit, like are, mm -hmm. can, will they always be debit to employees or can they also be subcontractors? So we focus on W-2 employees. Okay. Okay. And now yes. uh, we, uh, let me... we have tried oh, the subcontractors and mm -hmm. we, we personally just feel like we, we are the most successful with W-2 employees. Gotcha. And will these people work for recruit or they are hired straight through our companies? There's, there's, they're, they're hired straight through your company. All okay. we're doing is creating this engine that features your company and is powered by applicants and that app and those applicants land on your doorstep to interview you're getting quality applicants at your doorstep with no effort to by you whatsoever that's 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 perfect and then the last thing i was just wondering is can this be for commercial cleaning or residential both okay. uh gotcha just want to make sure i figured it but i want to make sure nobody disqualifies themselves watching this video on their own <laughs> no we okay, uh perfect. recruit for 25 different industries right now our best like where we are our sweet spot is cleaning commercial and residential perfect all right y'all so make sure y'all go check it out Woot recruit i got a special link right in the comments of this video as well as the description go click that link make sure y'all go check it out all right now we also got to talk about this third company that you have service car that one sounds pretty yes. interesting as well so let's talk about what is service car so service car is um it is in quoting tool uh, for your website. And so we use machine engine learning to give the fastest quote that you've ever experienced as a consumer. Gotcha. Yes. So we're pulling all of this data and as a consumer, you can get a quote for your property, whether it's commercial or residential, you can get a quote for your property in less than 10 seconds. Okay. Now when you say quote, you mean like in, in what regards? An estimate. Okay, for like any industry? For where right now we do residential cleaning and commercial cleaning for service. Oh, cars. gotcha. So it's like, it's like a, uh, mm -hmm. uh, almost like a bidding calculator, but it's for the customer facing part of it. Is yes, that what I'm hearing? For the customer facing. Cool. Yep, it's it's on your website. Like you have full control over. We use geospatial pricing as well. Say, like, hey, mm -hmm. consumer can go get a quote, but if that, that potential lead consumer, wants a quote and this one lives over here and this one lives over here we right. have the ability in service cart to give different pricing mm -hmm. to say oh i do windows here but not here okay and they would never see the difference like they don't know because maybe it's drive time you need to account for maybe you only have so many employees in this area so we use geospatial pricing where you can like map out your areas of what service you do if it's a different price how much is it and maybe you don't do windows here, but you do windows in this zip code. Gotcha. Um, yes. And it's all controlled um, by machine learning. So it's so fast. Like imagine a chat GBT for quoting. Right. Right. I like that. Mm -hmm. So, so how would, would it basically a company would basically pay you 
for service cart, and then you will basically put a piece of code on that site to have them have yes. customer facing calculate. Oh, that's nice. Okay. Yeah, Fair and it's enough. on my Organize It website. So if anybody wants to check it out, you can go on my Organize It SWFL.com. You can get a quote. Now you have to live in my service area because if you don't live in my service area, you can't get a quote. <laughs> Uh, gotcha. <laughs> it blocks you. So just go find a house on Zillow or something for sale. But you can check out how fast it is, what it looks like. Um, there's ways to set pricing to change your pricing because we don't tend to do the pricing like, say, hotels. During the weekend, my hotel rate may be higher than if I want to check into a hotel on Monday. But mm -hmm. for some reason, we don't do that. Like during our busy time, raise our rates automatically. Or, you know, if everybody wants a particular day of the week, you could charge more money for that day. But we don't tend to do that because we don't have the tools to to make that automatic and that's what we've done with service cart okay all right fair enough now what advice would you give to somebody who wants to run you know multiple companies because you're running three right now so how would what advice would you give to somebody that wanted to run multiple different companies at once so this has been an interesting uh challenge i will say i'm not gonna lie it's hard um, yeah. you know, you see all these mentors that we, we follow, like, like the Gary V's of the world, the Dan Martell's of the world, right. Um, and, or Brussels Bronson's and, and they do multiple things. They have multiple companies invest in their, their investors. So I will say it's not easy. It, it's, it's a great reward. Um, you have to be prepared for the hustle is real. Like just not going to lie. There's no four hour work week here. Um, right. But my recommendation is two things. One, you need an assistant, an executive assistant. You need someone to help you manage your energy. So time management is no such thing. Um, I'm certified in time management. I got this when I was an organizer. It's a joke. There's no such thing on how to manage something you have no control over how fast or slow it moves, right? Time moves at its own pace. So you need an executive assistant to help you manage your energy. Like how much time am I working in this company and this company and this company? They help you manage that. They help you manage your calendar. As you were talking to Marilyn, right? I was not involved in that at all. <laughs> right. Um, so she helps me manage my energy. She holds me accountable. She actually says, Libby, I think frankly, that's not worth your time. If it's something she believes it's not worth my time. Mm -hmm. Um, and I need that. And then so ha get an assistant, get a helper, outsource it somewhere all over the world. With remote, we, we now have the ability to source the best people in the world versus just like in our hometown. Yeah. So out, out, look at outsourcing. Mm -hmm. I was going to say, so second speaking tip, of that, go for it. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to ask, where could we uh, go to find like an executive assistant? What would you recommend? Um, so I have a great friend who owns um, a home service. Um, she owns Home Service VA. Her name's Melody Edwards. She sources from the Philippines. Uh, my my assistant, um, I got from a recommendation from somebody else. Uh, but I, I have three, three or four people from Melody. She's great. You can look on Upwork. Um, you can still look on Indeed. Um, so the you know just just kind of figure out what what kind of person do you want like personality forget skill set because you're gonna you're gonna train them on most things but they gotta they gotta match your skill set i'm sorry your personality um and then my next recommendation which i have not completed yet and it's the vein of my current existence is okay your softwares need to communicate or work in similar platforms um and i'll give you an example uh, right now, every all three companies communicate. One is in Slack, one is in WhatsApp, one's just through text message. Like, you need to try to get everything working in the same platforms. So I know CRMs, you probably can't do that because my cleaning company runs in one CRM where the software is running HubSpot. Like, but as far how close can I get everything running within the same softwares? That way you're not managing all these communication platforms, all these softwares, all these logins, because it will start to overwhelm you. Yeah. Yeah. I agree with that a thousand percent. That's how, that has been kill, killing me for since the beginning of my company, because I got like, you know, Shopify for one thing, ClickFunnels for one thing and Calendly and all these different apps. I'm paying for like 25 apps. I will say now that we got the clean business network uh, CRM, everything has started to be condensed now we can pretty much manage everything all of the text the facebook messages and everything all in that one crm but it's just been a process of you know getting rid of all of those different software so i love that last yes. tip you got 
Yeah. So sure. we're currently do that. We're, we're moving over everything to as much of the same as we can. And it's okay. Like with Slack, Woo Recruit pays for all of the Slack companies, right? Like all the companies being Slack, but organize it just pays Woot Recruit back and it's cheaper. That's the other thing. It's cheaper. Right. So we just have an auto pay set to like pay Woot Recruit back uh, for things that we use that maybe we buy the enterprise for and all companies use it yeah okay i love it are you looking to start your own cleaning company or maybe you started your cleaning company but you just need a support group some mentorship some guidance hell a bidding calculator just to help you know if you're pricing the job correctly join us at cleanbiznetwork.app that's www.cleanbiznetwork.app today and get on the right track with your cleaning company we have everything you could possibly need to get you going in the right direction and see why we've been the leading clean business consulting company for the past five years and why they call me AJ Simmons, the cleaning business coach. So I can help you just like I've helped and my company has helped thousands of other people start and grow their cleaning company. Go to the number one source today, www.cleanbiznetwork.app. Thank you. Now we're going to switch it up a little bit and we're going to do this thing I call the lightning round. And so the way it works is I'm just going to say a word or a phrase and you just tell me the first thing that comes to mind. You ready? Sure. All right, here we go. First word is entrepreneurship. Fun. Okay. Uh, the cleaning business. It's a people driven business, whether that's customers okay. or employees, it is a people business. You're in the, pe the business of people. I love it. How about the organizing business? Oh, gosh, it is. It's methodical, right? You're constantly creating processes and systems for other people. Okay. Okay. Uh, social media. Exponential. We live in the greatest <laughs> yeah. time in the world right now, right? We have the world literally in our pocket yeah. and it's so exponential of what we can do with social media. Agree. Uh, the platform, social media platform that you spend the most time on? Facebook. Okay. Okay. Uh, would you rather have an 850 credit score or a million dollars cash? Oh, probably a million dollars cash. <laughs> right. Me personally, me too. Well, I, I went through a divorce, a horrible divorce, and I had to file bankruptcy. So I've been there. Like I had to yeah. start all over. Yeah. And essentially you learn how to you learn how to get around that. Yeah, and quite frankly, most of us don't have enough debt that surpasses a million dollars. So whatever your credit is, like a million dollars will pay off that 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 stuff and fix your credit anyway. So <laughs> I'm with you on but a million also, dollars. Like what could you do with a million dollars? Make another million dollars. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> there you go. All right. The next one is uh your go-to karaoke song if you had to sing every single word word for word or something bad happens to you oh god okay so one i won't drink i, I won't i'm not a karaoke singer because i would need to have a lot of drinks inside me to sing karaoke <laughs> right. um but if if i had to pick a song it would be mary j bly no more drama oh wow okay nice <laughs> okay the next one is um key to success hard work okay it, it, it's not easy yeah i agree uh fa favorite hobby when you got some free time so i used to be a huge basketball fan like i have a full-size basketball court in my backyard watch basketball um but i'm a little bit older now <laughs> uh so the hobbies kind of shifted um but i, I really enjoy uh, being outside and exercising um okay. so i would say exercising outside okay all right uh your favorite youtube channel to watch favorite youtube channel to watch um so i recently became very good friends with uh roger wakefield okay and i've been watching him and he's in the plumbing industry but he's gotcha. got a half a million subscribers and he did it in less than five years nice, so nice. i don't care about plumbing i'm studying roger <laughs> Yes, <laughs> I do that a lot. Like, there's a lot of people I'm watching. It's not because I care about what they're much talking about the most. I'm studying how are you communicating, how are you titling your videos, how you know all of that stuff. So yeah, what your thumbnails you, look like? Like exactly. Are you? Do yeah. you have a YouTube channel, by the way? 
Yes, yeah, so we have um, or organize a YouTube channel, a Woot Recruit, and a Libby Delusion, and the handles to those channels are the exact names to all of them. Perfect, perfect. All right, best decision you ever made in business? Starting my cleaning company. Nice, okay. Favorite genre of music? 90s R&B. All right, well in that case, we're gonna wrap it up with give me your top five R&B artists all time. Here we go. Oh, okay. Well, Mary J. Bly for sure, right? Okay. Um, Cisco, Genuine. Okay. Like I am old school '90s R&B. So it was Mary J. Bly. Uh, yeah, like Cisco. Uh, cool. Boys to Men. Oh, used to love them. Okay. Um, Tony, Tony, Tony. I think his name was. Gosh, uh, I don't know. Tony, Tony, it's Tony. on my oh, you not, uh, Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, it's on my right conversation. Here. Yeah. We got uh so that was that was Mary J, that was Genuine, um Cisco. Yeah, Cisco to Boys and Men and Tony Tony Tony. I love it. And by the, by the way, first off, Cisco is slept on, man. So I'm glad you gave him some love right there because he got his voice is crazy and he gets slept on a lot. So shout out to, to your playlist right there. The next one is what is your long term goal? I usually ask this for like your company, the one company, but since you got multiple, I guess I just asked you for like your life in general. What's your long term goal? So my long-term goal um, is to change the way the service industry recruits and to take and to take indeed down. Okay, fair enough, fair enough. Now, if you yes. had to start all over again, which is, sound like you kind of <laughs> pretty much tried this before, but if you had to start all over again, you got zero dollars to your name. You get to keep all your knowledge, but you just got zero dollars. What would you do to get back up to the point you are today? Man, that's a good question. I got zero dollars, but I have all my knowledge. Um, so I love to teach and educate and help based off of my experience, my mistakes. Um, I would lean into social media more. I wish I would have built it up more. Um, and I wish for all the young people to like, social media is not going away. Video is not going away. I wish I would have done more video, more social media, because that costs us nothing but our time. Right. Nothing but my time. So if I have no money, I can't go buy cleaning supplies to start a cleaning company. Right. So lean into your personal brand, who you are, because that personal brand will help the reputation of any other company you want to make, any other company you want to build. Lean into the social media, into video content, because with ChatGPT, we're all experts. Everyone can be an expert. But the one that the things that are going to differentiate us is stories and character or personality. And that is told through video or the written word. So, you know, that's gonna be the differentiator between a lot of companies right now is with AI, anyone can be an expert, but the stories and the personalities behind them are the, what's gonna differentiate us. Lean into social media, lean into video, and lean, lean into being yourself and sharing that with the world. Yeah, I love it, and you know, <laughs> I pretty much did that, so I, I can vouch that that way will work, <laughs> right? <laughs> but uh, all right, if somebody's watching this video right now and they're they're, they're thinking, you know, I want to start a company too, but they're just kind of scared to make that jump and take that chance. What advice could you give that person right now? Um, you got to find something you'd love to do because at first you're not gonna make any money. <laughs> um, you know, it, it's hard. You're gonna do some work. You can do some work for free. And, and lean into something that you love. So I left a prior career and I was kind of devastated by having to leave it, but I had to reevaluate what did I actually do in that, that I love so much. And it was the organizing side and all of my businesses, my organizing side is what creates that success. So find something that you just love to do. Don't be scared to try certain things. Don't be scared to try various things. Go out, really sit down. What do I love to do? What would I do for free every day? not get paid for it that's a business that you could do day in and day out no matter if it takes you five years to start it or get it up and running or a year so just lean into being curious in your with yourself and asking you those questions and then you just got to go and do it who cares if it's right who cares if you have a website who cares if it's perfect just go and start yeah, I love it. I love it. Miss Libby Delusion, y'all. Thank you so much, Libby, for coming on. Again, let the people know how can we follow your journey and then also where can we go to check out Woot Recruit and all of the other companies as well. Sure. So the easiest way is that you can just Google Libby Delusion or LibbyD.com. 
right? L-I-B-B-Y-D.com has all of my companies housed on there, all my social media handles, because my last name is a little hard to spell. So LibbyD.com will take you everywhere. You can find out about Organize It, Service Cart, Woot Recruit. You can even find out about CBF on there. Um, I'm actually with Debbie right now at a CBF event and came up to the hotel room to do this interview. Um, So you can just follow us there and it'll really lead you to all of our other businesses. Perfect, perfect. And thank you so much for coming on again, Libby. And we got to get you at CBN Conference. We got to make sure we get you there. (laughs) All right. Absolutely. Thank you so much. All right. You have a good one. Thank you. Thank you. Listen, every single year I host the biggest celebration of the cleaning industry, and that's the Clean Biz Network Conference, y'all. And get ready. Get your tickets ASAP before time runs out. Go to www.cbnconference.com and meet me there. We're going to be in Las Vegas, y'all. Las Vegas at the JW Marriott Hotel. Get your tickets. You do not want to miss this event. Every single year it gets bigger and better. The dates are February 28th through March 1st, 2024. And this year, and we got a special guest hosting, y'all. This next conference that will be hosted by none other than Tenacity Academy, y'all. Tenacity Clean, y'all seen them on their YouTube channel, Mrs. Johnson, Miss Tamika. They gonna kill it, they gonna bring that energy. And not only them, we also got some amazing speakers lined up for y'all. I'm talking about Mr. Eric Coffey from GovCon Giants. If you are interested in government contracts, everybody knows Eric Coffey is the man. He is the GOAT of the government contract, y'all. So you definitely want to be there to hear from him. We got Raylan Dunlap from the Hustle Network. Check out our YouTube channel. Massive, all about just hustling and getting to this money, y'all. Shout out to the Cleaning Balls family. Meet DJ The Balls at the Clean Business Network Conference. We also got Mila, the host keeper, the queen of Airbnb cleaning, y'all. Miss Carolyn Arilano. Y'all already know that she killing it as well in the cleaning space. The legendary Debbie Sardone who has been the number one residential cleaning consultant for I don't know how long now. She's probably the best to ever do it in the residential cleaning space. Mr. Mario Kelly, who specializes in stadiums, y'all. If you ever wanted to know how to get those big contracts cleaning the sports stadiums and all of that, you do not want to miss this. Mario Kelly will be there. And we also have the king of client attraction. Mr. Mark Quill Russell will be in the building. You do not want to miss the event. And we have so many other great speakers as well. Too many to name. Not to mention we're going to have breakout sessions. We're going to have special dinners served. It's going to be a black tie affair. We're going to give out awards. I'm telling you, it's going to be so big. Live DJs, you do not want to miss this event. Go to www.cbnconference.com. Get your tickets. Meet me there. Meet my wife. Meet my kids. We all going to be there. Let's get it, y'all.